Welcome to a brand new episode of everyone's favourite Doctor Who podcast coming out of Australia. It's D4WH. Yay. My name is Adam O'Sullivan and joining me as always, my co-host, Nakia Schutt. Hello, Adam. Nice to talk to you early this Australian morning. Yes, it is six o'clock in the morning here. Yes. That's how time differences work. Uh, <laughs> joining us as a very special guest, please welcome Helen King from Blue Eyes Bow Ties. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for getting up so early to speak to me. (laughs) No, no, of course. Yeah, if this time suits you, then that's fine with us. Absolutely. (laughs) I think when I set the times, I didn't realise how early I had to get up to get here by six o'clock. Oh, no, yeah. I looked at my, uh, I looked at the times and I thought, wow, you know, that is an early start for you guys. So I I do appreciate it. (laughs) That's why it's on a Sunday. That's how keen we are. (laughs) We're big Doctor Who nerds, as you might have guessed already. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, I, I see that you like Doctor Who, definitely. Yeah, just a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, just a tad, just a tad. All right, let's start as we always do. Uh, Helen, would you like to go through your history with Doctor Who? Yeah, so, I mean, I was a child growing up in the 80s, so Doctor Who was just part of life. You know, you you knew about Doctor Who, it was on the TV. Uh, So it's something that I've always been familiar with, and I've watched it on and off over the years with the various uh, different Doctors. I think probably the Doctor that I remember from my childhood the best was actually Sylvester McCoy in the late 80s. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I can remember. Remember, you know, being at my grandparents watching episodes of Doctor Who with him in. Yeah, it's, it's fond memories, actually. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. We've uh, touched on Sylvester McCoy a little bit. Uh, we love his costume. Yeah, yeah. And he was quite eccentric. I know sort of, yeah. you know, that's a feature of the Doctor, but his, his costumes were interesting. Yeah, definitely. I think he's naturally quite eccentric, too, which I think is plays really well as someone yeah. who's being the Doctor. Yeah, definitely. I think it's those more iconic uh, costumes that you, uh, you really recognise, like uh, Matt Smith or Sylvester McCoy. Like, uh, you know, Christopher Eck- Eccleston with his uh, bomber jacket would probably just, you know, fit in in a, a convention, whereas uh, something like a Sylvester McCoy or a Matt Smith or something, you would definitely recognise it straight away. Yeah, definitely. They really stand out. Yeah, how about a Colin Baker? Yeah, I think um, <laughs> I, remember, well, I remember seeing the pictures of him. I obviously, I don't think I was old enough to have ever seen any of that, but uh, yeah. yeah, I definitely have seen him since. But I think um, I was just thinking about it today, actually, and um, I was trying to wrap my brains for who some of my the, my favourite I like baddies were in Doctor Who oh yeah and I know from sort of more more recent years I really liked the uh, the Weeping Angels and actually today I sat down and I watched Blink and the Angels take Manhattan again just like because they're really scary <laughs> I really like them oh that's awesome <laughs> and Blink is an absolutely classic episode I just love that yeah me too it's really scary yeah it is I really enjoyed it I hadn't seen it for years yeah I was talking to someone recently and they said oh they sat down and watched Blink and they said it's an amazing episode and then they watched uh, uh, dinosaurs on a spaceship oh. and they were like it was so completely different and yeah but I, I mean that's a silly episode as it is so they they went from one extreme to the other basically yeah yeah definitely <laughs> but that's Doctor Who too it's always a mixed bag yeah <laughs> yeah definitely yeah now the uh, the reason we got you on the podcast Helen is uh, you happen to be the person who has made the bow ties that uh, are now being featured on series 12 of Doctor Who how exciting I know I'm um, absolutely thrilled I, I think w- when it all happened I was I was stunned I think for about a week <laughs> I was like I can't can't quite believe the sort of the, the gravity of it and then you know as, as more and more people sort of got in touch with me and on social media I was like wow this oh is incredible God. were you yeah. pinching yourself Helen thinking this can't be real I was a bit I was because I just like I said I just don't think like the gravity of it quite hit me mm, I yeah. sort of realized that you know the doctor was in my bow tie but <laughs> oh my God. 
I, I just, I guess it took me a while to think, actually, wow, you know, the doctor is in my bow tie. <laughs> it was brilliant. Now, uh, I'm sure you've gone through this story many times before and will continue to go through it many times after. But do you just want to give us a brief rundown of how your bow tie ended up on Doctor Who? Yeah. Um, so it was it was actually quite interesting because it was way back in January 2019. Mm. Wow. A person from the BBC costume department for Doctor Who mm. actually uh, purchased three of the same bow tie um, oh. from my website. And, like you know, a purchase like that, really nothing out of the ordinary. But mm. when I had a look at the shipping address and I saw it was for, it mentioned Doctor Who, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, like, wow. what could this be about? <laughs> and I, I was sitting there and I thought, shall I email him? Shall I ask? Or, you know, shall yeah. I just like respect his, you know, privacy? Yeah. And I thought, no, I've got to. I would. I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I sent a message saying, oh, I just wondered, you know, could you tell me anything about what this, the bow tie might be used for? And the person got back to me, you know, very polite and just said, I'm really sorry. I can't say anything. <gasps> and you must keep it an absolute secret. What a yeah. terrible secret to keep. <laughs> yeah well I thought you know I thought I can do that I can do that and so I did keep it a secret and to be honest I forgot about it really because I just <laughs> thought you know it, it it must be so common that people buy costumes and props that never get used um, yeah true and I didn't I didn't know how long it would take you know I didn't know what stage of the production they were at or anything yeah so I'd completely forgotten about it and um I was actually this is this is really embarrassing but I was just in the local supermarket <laughs> on Saturday the 20th 23rd of November and um, I just got an email on my um, on my phone and I looked at it and it was really brief and it just said the bow ties in the trailer <gasps> thanks for keeping the secret oh. and, I, and I looked at this message and I was like the bow ties in what trailer I'm like where's the trailer <laughs> where's the trailer <laughs> and it was like really stupid moment you know just standing there in the chiller aisle thinking where's the what trailer yeah. where and and then I looked at were you uh, were you thinking uh, do I buy the groceries I wanted first or do I rush home and see the trailer first <laughs> no I actually because I was a bit sort of surprised and thinking what's going on and I was mm. yeah very stunned as I said we I carried on my shop yeah I got all my stuff and I did I, I raced home afterwards and I, obviously I realized what the person meant by that point and I sort of turned on my computer and I went on social media and I yeah. went on you know the BBC and all the other different websites and and like there it was and <gasps> that the person from the costume department actually sent me a photo it was the one that had actually already was released that day where the sort of the, the crew are standing in front of the TARDIS and the bow tie that she She's wearing there. It, it looks sort of quite golden in colour. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, he'd said that this is your bow tie, and um, mm. so I watched the trailer, and it comes up much darker in the trailer. Mm. I think much like it is more like it is in real life. And I, yeah, I was just like, <laughs> my goodness. And my husband, like, he was really excited. <laughs> I wish I was just like in shock. He was really excited. He was like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god when did it kind yeah. of hit you oh, oh my god my bow ties in doctor who was it not until you'd seen it in the trailer or yeah definitely and, and do you know what i think I, I this is really embarrassing either yesterday or the day before the bbc released the doctor who magazine with jodie whittaker on the front wearing the bow tie oh yeah and i saw it on twitter and i just burst into tears and oh. i think oh yes <laughs> Because you could see the bow tie and it just looks so fantastic. Helen, I can understand that bursting into tears. I think I'd be shaking a little because you're a small business, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. I've only been going for about three years and it's just me and I do, I make everything, I pack everything myself. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. I know. I, I was thinking the other day, I wonder why this person got in touch with me. I did say to them, you know, how did you find me? Mm. And I think they were just sort of, you know, literally surfing the internet <gasps> looking for bow ties maybe oh. oh that's awesome yeah that's amazing yeah it was amazing yeah it's been interesting because I've, I've been uh i've been trying to keep this interview a secret just in case uh, our schedules didn't work or whatever you know that sort of thing yeah <laughs> but um everyone i've spoken to has gone oh yeah what's a what's a what boss or their manager life what's a company like no no it's just her it's just one person making all of these bow ties and they're like oh my god that's amazing <laughs> yeah yeah i think um it, i think the uh, the popularity of the bow tie has certainly taken me by surprise Surprise. And you definitely don't have to be embarrassed because the uh, the trailer came out about 3 p.m. Uh, on the 23rd of uh, November, and and that's one o'clock in the morning here in Australia, and uh, and I was up watching that trailer. <laughs> 
and uh, up for a few hours after preparing the episode that we recorded about the trailer. Uh, I, I think I got to bed at about four o'clock that morning. <laughs> yeah, and we can make an hour podcast out of a one minute trailer. So <laughs> yes, exactly. That's uh, dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> you say dedicated, I say crazy. Yeah. But you know, potato, potato. Well, there was a lot to talk about. I mean, she's in a lot of yeah. different scenes, and there's an awful lot going on. Different countries potentially. You know, it, there was a lot you could sort of get from that trailer. I think needed some analysing. And it was amazing to see the bow tie because I was a big Matt Smith fan. Oh yes, loved the bow tie. So it was really good to see Jody in a bow tie. And I'm thinking, oh great, they're calling back to the Eleventh Doctor. So and it's a cool bow tie. Yeah, and I think she looks really cool in it as well. I think oh, it's, oh yeah. so awesome. A lot of people have said to me, you know, since I've been talking to people about it, you know, oh, what do you think of a woman wearing a bow tie? I'm a bit like, well, it's a bit of a nonsensical question, really. You can wear what you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you know it's brilliant. And I think you know women buy bow ties off me, you know, as well as men, and I absolutely love it. And I really applaud her for uh, you know for wearing it and looking so great in it. Oh yeah, she looks fantastic. And I I really don't think the bow tie is only for men. No. Women can wear ties. Why can't we wear bow ties? Exactly. And I think you know traditionally they are a male accessory. There's no doubt about that. You know, oh, yeah. a couple of hundred years ago when they came about, that's what it was. But definitely now, no. You know, they, mm. anyone can wear a bow tie and look good in it. Yeah, they're a fashion accessory. It's quite interesting because uh, we, we mentioned on the podcast a couple of times our, uh, when they announced the female doctor a couple of years ago, everyone was worried about, oh, it's a female doctor uh, and that sort of thing. But thankfully, some of that has, uh, has died down. And we've noticed that uh, Jodie Whittaker is, is just as stunning wearing a suit as she is when she's uh, was wearing something like a ball gown or something like that. Yeah, it's quite yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's really, really good. She, she rocks the gender neutral, I think, very well. She does. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the male doctors did that as well. You, you kind of wouldn't be surprised if Matt Smith or David Tennant rocked up in a ball gown or something like that. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, really very true, actually. Or Sylvester McCoy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally, Nakia, you would understand what it feels like when someone goes, oh, Matt Smith looks good in that, uh, that suit. You're like, all right, all right, I'm right here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's right. I'm next to him. I look good too. I've got a bow tie. <laughs> Look, let's go back to the start, Helen. Do you want to talk us through how you started Blue Eye Bow Ties? How how you began? Yeah. Um. So it was about 2016, and um, my husband. Well, then uh, we weren't married, but he uh, proposed to me, Aww. and he he made a really lovely effort with the proposal. And I just thought I'd Aww. like to do something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Aww. That's> nice. <laughs> sick, really. <laughs> I'd like to do something, you know, nice for him. And um, I'm actually I'm only part time now, but I'm a history teacher as well. Ah. So I. I think for many years, a bit teaching full time back then, I hadn't really had time for a hobby. I'd been really busy, but I'd always loved sewing and I used to make clothes when I was younger. So I thought, I know, I'll just I'll dust off the sewing machine and um, I decided to make him a waistcoat. So I made him a waistcoat and it actually came out really well mm. and he really liked it. And I think he saw my love of sewing return and how it, it was really nice that I'd sort of got my hobby back. So I think he wanted to encourage me to, you know, see if I could make something else. So mm. he said, well, why don't you make a boat? tie to go with the waistcoat so eventually I did and it was a nice thing it was an enjoyable thing to make and I just we just sort of both were thinking about it I think independently and I thought well why don't I see if I can make them and sell them absolutely you know, it's a good time for bow ties they were kind of on the up in terms of popularity and so I made mm. yeah I, I just made a few just a handful and I actually started wow I started off selling them on eBay and my first one sold within like four days and I thought wow that was pretty good <laughs> You know. Yeah, my stuff sits on eBay for years. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> this is it. I thought this, it has to be like something going well here because, yeah. you know, like you said, things are on eBay forever and you never sell stuff. Yeah, exactly. So it's probably about three months after that, I decided to get my own website and it's, uh, yeah, it's gone from strength to strength, really. I just love it. It's nice to have a hobby that I enjoy and it, yeah. you know, I've made so many connections and, you know, now this, it's, oh, oh it's brilliant. It's going to be more than a hobby now, Helen. <laughs> it's just going to continue. Yeah. In your yeah. life. <laughs> you might you might have to call in sick to work a few times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shh, don't say that. <laughs> oh, okay, right, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. You're sounding very, very hoarse, very throaty. <laughs> yes. yeah. I don't think the uh, UK school system uh, listens to our podcast, but if they do, hi. <laughs> yeah, thank Hello. you. I will be in work next week, I promise. <laughs> yeah, don't fire Helen, please. 
it's actually quite interesting because I was really, really, really poorly for two weeks leading up to before the, this news came out about Doctor Who. <gasps> and it was so fortunate that I just sort of turned a corner. I mean, it was only a really bad cold, but it just knocked me for six. Oh, and that yeah. weekend was the first weekend I started to feel better. And it's so lucky because if it had happened a couple of weeks before, I'd have just been floored. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Having to uh, reject interviews, <laughs> I just feel a little bit sick. Yeah. Oh, is it because of the trailer? No, 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 nothing like that. <laughs> it would have looked really bad on me. <laughs> <laughs> that first bow tie, was it just a, a classic uh, black bow tie? Because well, you've got a, a few different designs on your website. There's uh, floral patterns, there's more uh, classic patterns like the, the black bow ties, the polka dot ones. Uh, what design was that original bow tie? It was a really crazy, like, pop art New York style bow tie. So Ooh. it had, oh, like, the Statue of Liberty and Empire State oh. building the American flag, and it was all sort of all jumbled up and really brightly coloured. So it was a real gamble for a first one, but they were really popular. Yeah. How long did they take to make? Um, About an hour. That's all right. Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, sometimes I can sort of work quicker than others, and I think, but the, the problem with them is there's quite a lot of room mm. for error when you're making them um so you have to take your time otherwise you just waste one. Oh yeah you know, and then you, you have to start again you know if you, if you cut too quickly you might cut through a, a seam I think just little things really they're quite fiddly so it's it's best just to be very calm and work on them you know slowly I was thinking that they're small so they would be quite fiddly wouldn't they yeah which is not great when you're having to sort of make a load at a time <laughs> yeah. What, <laughs> you know? are you, have you been inundated with orders now uh it has been a noticeably busier definitely oh. Oh, yeah, great. and I, I would say that, yeah, I've had a lot of interest. I think, it, I, I mean, I'm assuming that the people who are buying them at the moment are sort of the real fans, you know, mm. they really love Doctor Who. They've got their ear to the ground. They know exactly what's going on and they've found me mm -hmm. and, you know, my business. So I've had some lovely feedback from people, you know, thanking me for the beautiful bow ties and it's been really nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see, uh, you can see pictures of them on Twitter. There's a, there's a lot of people who are sharing when they're, they're receiving their bow ties. Yeah, it's been really nice. So it's absolutely lovely to see and I haven't actually seen I think I've seen one person actually who's put it on and taken some pictures of himself wearing it but um, yeah I look forward to seeing some more pictures because I think a lot of people seem to be waiting to get the whole outfit. Oh yes yeah. Yeah. Including the jacket. It'll be a cosplay outfit for sure. Yeah definitely. And that's the other thing uh, Matt Smith was a pre-tied bow tie so uh, it was very easy to put on whereas yours is a, a self-tied bow tie and I, I think the ability to tie a bow tie has definitely been lost in the, the human consciousness. So uh, we're starting to relearn that. So uh, I think some people are, are, are waiting to uh, get that right. I know that I'll need the tutorial when I eventually uh, eventually purchase one. Yeah, yeah. well, it's actually, it's really <laughs> lucky actually because my husband made me a fantastic how to tie a bow tie video, which is on the website. So if, if oh, you need really? to- Yeah, I mean, it is, it's very in depth. You know, it's 12 minutes long. If you go on YouTube, most of the how to tie bow tie videos are sort of two, three minutes. Yeah. yeah. And some people do find it a bit too long but if you watch it and follow it you will tie a perfect bow tie oh fantastic because it's such a good video because they are hard to tie yeah i think when you get the knack of it it's just like mm. you know you, you understand and you get it but the thing is there's a trick and it's to do with your thumb and where you push the fabric through at the back of the bow tie ah. so yeah. my husband he goes through that trick and he sort of reveals what you need to do and i think that's that's the crucial bit really well that's good yeah because my issue with the it was always that it's a little bit too too loose when I go to pull the ends and it, it slips through and slips out and then I have to start all over again so I'll I'll definitely have to check out yeah. that video yeah good <laughs> I will too because I don't think I know I know how to tie a Windsor knot but a, in a normal tie but don't know how to tie a bow tie so I have to learn yeah I'm, you never know when I'm gonna need it you're just slowly collecting uh, all, the, all of the 13th uh, outfits aren't you Nakia <laughs> yeah I pretty much am yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm getting my bow tie my order's coming Helen it's coming oh okay <laughs> excellent now your husband uh, is, is he the uh, the model on the website yes he is yeah oh, I've often, I haven't adorable. obviously been able to haven't been able to afford like proper models so he and I are both on the, on the website oh yeah. I bet your husband loves you saying that that's a bit hard <laughs> <really>. <laughs> I think he understands. He's pretty good, or at least he, he's used to taking insults off me. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing you there, sister. My husband's used to it too. <laughs> yeah, they've got to have a thick skin, otherwise they're not they... going to be able to put up with women like us. No, I'm afraid. They're not going to be able to put up with marriage. 
<laughs> yeah. Now the name Blue Eye Bow Ties. Is that do you do you have blue eyes or is that your husband as well? Both of us do actually. Oh, oh really? Yeah, but you know it's one of those things that um, when I had to come up with a name for my business for my website, I didn't have a name in my mind that I wanted to use, and that sort of just popped into my head and and it rhymed, and I thought, okay, you know it's a bit different. I'll go with that. Yeah, I, I don't know whether it was the best choice of name for a business. I don't know, but um, I like it. I I think it's quite quite quirky that's what i like about it yeah trust us with a name like d4wh which uh yeah people don't really yeah. understand why we're we were called d4wh thankfully we're the the top listing on google now we muscled out uh, i think it was a truck part yeah, or a tractor screw part, or something i think yeah <laughs> damn those tractor parts <laughs> yeah oh google well trying to get to the top of google oh my goodness <laughs> i mean that's probably how blue eyes bow tie came up it would it's a catchy name so they would have clicked on that to look at it yeah there you go yeah well it is that is another thing it is a little bit different and if you type it in it does tend to come up first whereas if you go for something a bit more generic then obviously you're fighting against a lot of other yeah uh, like yeah exactly terms, so uh, yeah so there's no point changing your name to uh to doctor who bow tie you'll just be lost in uh, a sea of doctor who results yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly so where is the weirdest place helen that you've sent a bow tie in the world a doctor who one or just a regular one just any just a regular one because we are uh, noticed on your website you've got a uh, a map of all the countries you send bow ties to yeah yeah i think um i sent one went to chile one. Oh yes wow i just got back from chile actually oh did you have a nice time no i was uh i was there uh there's currently in the middle of a protest revolution basically <laughs> oh. yeah i was, there, I was there for work basically and i uh couldn't go to see any of the landmarks thankfully i got the work done that i needed to but oh. yeah yeah oh well what else can you do in a curfew <laughs> what can you do <laughs> but they were all dressed very well in bow ties that's for sure mm. <laughs> i've also so sent um, a couple went to the Philippines Ooh. and of, obviously Australia and lots to America and lots in Europe. So I have, uh, yeah, I've sent bow ties all over the world. I've never sent one to Russia though. Never Ooh. to Russia. Oh, yeah. So if you're a Doctor Who fan in Russia. or you just like bow ties, please check out uh, blueeyebowties.com. <laughs> that, that, that's the website, isn't it? Uh, it's blueeyesbowties.com. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, then Russia's next, I'm sure. Maybe Putin will wear one for you. Yeah, that'd be. <laughs> Actually, I was going to say that would be good, mm. but I'm not sure, actually. Do you really want Putin to be wearing one? <laughs> I might keep that quieter than I have about the Doctor Who bow tie. <laughs> He might wear it in his calendar. Yeah. <laughs> Him riding a bear shirtless with just your bow tie on. Yeah. Are you trying to ruin me? You're trying to ruin me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course not. Sorry. <laughs> just that image now I've got stuck in my head. Yeah, so. yeah me too. I'm going to have to go and beat myself over the head. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, the response has been really good to the uh, bow tie. People are really enjoying it. And obviously once the episode comes out, you'll get another huge spike in people getting in contact with you wanting to buy those bow ties yeah I mean I, I hope so oh um, you will I, I am sort of as I said you know a small business and I don't have a huge presence online so I guess it's whether people find me and I think you know probably a lot of that will come from social media and for people you know there's like I said been a lot of real Doctor Who fans who have mentioned me and I guess that spreads the word and things get out but when it all first happened I think one of the reasons why I was a bit kind of not sort of you know screaming and shouting with joy the minute it happened was because I, I guess at the back of my mind I did think well you know this is amazing but I wonder if people are even going to be able to sort of find me and find the bow tie so yeah I've been really pleasantly surprised that people have I guess you worry does this translate to business or not yeah you know it's great that it's in there but what does it really mean in the end for you and you want to think it means something great but you just never know do you yeah that's exactly it and um mm. you know at the moment I'm just really happy that those people who seem to be you know the real fans are finding Finding me and are getting the bow tie for them to to have and keep. Yeah, because we uh we found out we're obviously a member of a couple of differently Doctor Who groups and uh and one of them shared uh, oh this is where you can get the uh, official bow tie that's in the trailer and we started following your page and uh, and sharing some stuff and yeah it's been been quite interesting. How quickly after you realised you're in the uh the, the series twelve trailer did you you realise oh I better update update the website so that uh, someone else can't claim uh, oh it's our bow tie. Um, do you know what I didn't even think of that. I just <laughs> Oh. I just got on my website and thought, well, I want to make sure that it's there and it's visible. So, you know, I would say within, I'd say later that day, you know, I made sure that it was, or the next day maybe, but yeah, very quickly decided it was a good idea. Once 
once the shock had uh, dropped down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now your uh, bow ties are limited edition. Do you have a certain amount of fabric that you can use to make the bow ties, or will you continue to make the bow ties until you the, the orders kind of drop off? No, I've got a limited amount of fabric, so oh, I've so got so getting quickly. Yeah, it's. I think I've got. I think I'll probably have maybe, I don't know, six six to ten metres of fabric left maybe, and that's it, and you can't buy it. Oh, wow. Oh, there'll be some nervous Hoovians out there. Yeah, you literally, I mean, I can't find it anywhere in the world. Wow. I've looked everywhere because obviously it would be, you know, nice to be able to make a few more because I know people want them, but as far as I'm concerned, once this fabric is gone, that's it. Oh, God, I'm getting my order in right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, uh, I get paid tomorrow, so if you put one aside for me, that'd <laughs> of be great. Course. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. You're okay at the moment. <laughs> do you source your fabric from a local supplier or, or do you, uh, you obviously don't make it yourself if you've only got a certain amount of uh, fabric left? Yeah, I am. Um, this particular fabric, if I'm honest, I can't remember where I found it. But what I t- <laughs> <laughs> the way my business works is that I go to various fabric shops around the local area or I, I often use Liberty of London fabrics. And okay. sometimes I go online and I find fabrics uh, that I like. But because it, everything's limited edition I only ever perhaps buy a meter or half a meter at a time yeah so yeah I, f- I found this fabric and I really liked it and it because it's black and gold yeah I knew that it would be popular as just you know as a regular bow tie because it's the color combination is one that lots of people really like to use and because it's got the metallic gold spots on it I actually uh, I was writing something out the other day for my website and I said it gives the bow tie another dimension <laughs> and I was like haha Dr. Who pun <laughs> well done thank you it was a pure accident i'm impressed we'll make a hoovian out of you yet oh yeah <laughs> i think i'm getting there <laughs> so it really is a uh, limited edition because it's a uh, limited edition from yourself if you can't remember where the fabric came from <laughs> yeah well you know wow. and, I, and again i have looked it up online and just it, it is nowhere nowhere visible online so I, I don't think i could find any more plus the fabrics that i buy the way that it works in the fabric world is that you you know a fabric will be released by a company one year and then like fashion yeah they won't they'll produce it maybe for that one season and then they don't produce it anymore so if you know it's not like they're still producing it that would have been one season's worth of fabric and now it's gone and they may very well make something similar but from my experience over the last three years you never get anything exactly the same oh uh a cosplayers know exactly what you're talking about i think the story is that uh david tennant's the suit was he wore when he when he was a doctor was made out of a pair of pants that kind of <laughs> pair of pants and then they made it into suits and and now obviously you can't find those uh those pants anymore you well can't... they can't find the pants because they bought them all yeah <laughs> people are trying to source fabric that looks somewhat similar to the original yeah I think uh, I think that's me with the fabric I think I must have had the last lot <laughs> wow it's an amazing story because you didn't you buy that fabric you don't even think this is going to you know be on Doctor Who so you don't even remember where it is it's just funny how life turns out yeah it, it is and do you, but do you know what i mean as much as i'd like everyone who's sort of a fan of doctor who to be able to have a bow tie it, it does make them that bit more special absolutely yeah knowing that it will come to an end i mean you could you know you could go to any replica bow tie and you know get it but yeah. this is the original fabric so. yeah the real deal yes so we're uh, sorry to all the fans that are listening to this episode after the bow ties are no longer available but i'm pretty sure nakia and i I will have put put in our orders already, so ha ha. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nani, nani, nana. Wow. I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> You're mean. Look, if they're our friends, then we'll let them take a photo of us in the bow tie. Uh, they just can't touch it, that's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. We'll autograph the photos. Yeah. Afterwards, we'll we'll put it back in its case and then back in a, a plastic bag and then <laughs> we'll put it away in the cupboard somewhere as a collector's item. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it didn't even occur to me actually for a little while afterwards that I was thinking, you know, these bow ties, they may become collectible. I don't know if they will. I've got no idea, but that would be fun. No, I, I think they could. How long do you think it'll be before they, they you start inviting you to Doctor Who conventions so you can come and sign the bow ties? Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, I hadn't even thought of that. No idea. 
<laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. That's my dream is to uh, one day be on an episode of Doctor Who just so I could do the convention tours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Adam's just going to have some ridiculous guest star episode and just keep turning up at convention. <laughs> Go away. You didn't even have a name and you died. Go. <laughs> so, Helen, I've got a question for you. Mm-hmm. If you were in the Doctor Who universe and you were the Doctor and, of course, every one of the Time Lords, they have a Time Lord name which describes who they are in essence or who they aspire to be. Mm-hmm. So Adam's Time Lord name is... The Nerd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My family gave me mine, which is the Commander, which I think is very <laughs> cruel. So we always ask everybody, if you were a Time Lord, what would your Time Lord name be? Well, I, I was trying to think of something edgy, but I quickly realised I'm nowhere near cool enough. So, <laughs> <laughs> so well, I, I, I've come up with two and I'm, you might have to help me decide. So okay. I, the first one I, ca- I came up with was The Seamstress. I thought, you know, this is this is hardcore stuff, this is. I like that. But my husband earlier today said, actually, you need to be the interceptor Ooh. because I seem to have developed a reputation for stealing food out of his hand before he can even stop me. <laughs> 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 oh, I like that one much better. Okay, we'll uh, we'll go with the interceptor. <laughs> and I I think it probably sums me up better. <laughs> so what I want to know now is, we turn up in the TARDIS. The interceptor's with us. What do you bring to the adventure? Hmm. What does the interceptor do besides steal the food for yeah, us? Yeah, everyone else's food, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just just basically go around making sure that everyone's well fed. <laughs> You're in my TARDIS, but you look amazing doing it. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and I can make you can I can make your clothes as well. Oh my know. god, <laughs> feed us and clothe us. You're in. You're in the TARDIS. Yeah, yeah. That's all I want. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah, you can you can, you'll be full, looking trendy, doing yeah. whatever you're doing. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, the amount of people who travel in the TARDIS and they've they've always got different clothes, so you'll never be out of a job. That's for sure. No, no. Yeah, you'll be very busy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. Now, Helen, do you have a particularly uh, favourite bow tie from your collection? Ooh, um, oh yeah. Oh, I'm on the spot now. What do I like? There's actually a, there's a, uh, a bow tie um, and it's a Liberty of London fabric called the Strawberry Thief, Ooh. which was originally a William Morris design. So a, a designer of sort of fabrics and wallpapers from the uh, 1800s in England. Oh. And it's a lovely sort of teal blue colour with little birds and strawberries on it Ooh. and it's just it's different and it's cute and yeah I really like that one. Oh, awesome and there's a uh, matching uh, pocket square as well uh, there there is or there was I can't remember if they've sold out with the pocket squares but oh okay th- I think there was yeah well oh, that's really good but to be honest the way I pick my fabrics I go for the, mainly the fabrics that I like so it's really difficult to pick a favorite because I actually like generally like all of them <laughs> yeah but I mean that's what's good about it because it's got that personal touch to it you're picking stuff that you like. Mm-hmm. And you're not just picking stuff that is, you know, you think commercially, oh, everyone will love this. You're picking stuff that's particular to you, which I think is what gives them the uniqueness because they're beautiful. Looking at the website, I just love them. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mm. and I think people appreciate that because mm. obviously you could go to many shops and buy a bow tie, but you're very unlikely to find a lot of my fabrics anywhere else on a bow tie, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it's great. You're, uh, you're definitely putting your own spin on things as opposed to a big... Big uh, chain store, which is constantly worrying about, oh, is is everyone going to like this, or is as many people as possible? Whereas you just like, yeah. oh, well, I like it, so other people like it as well. Yeah, and you know, some things perhaps don't sell, but you know what? It's amazing. I don't think I've got any product that hasn't sold, you know, at least one. Wow, oh, awesome! So there's something out there for everyone, which is really good. Yeah, and I think people like you need to. Yeah, definitely. And I think the nice with a bow tie, mm. I think you know, if it's you know a man wearing a bow tie with a traditional suit or tux Mm. I think the bow tie is the bit where he can like really show off his personality Mm -hmm. whereas I think often you know women perhaps go to events and they've got their you know the ball gowns or whatever it is and the bow tie is that sort of pop of color that you can have with your um you you sort of relatively plain suit yeah traditional black suit yeah I think it 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 allows you to have a bit of personality yeah and you can show your uniqueness and that's what I really like about them but they're just Mm -hmm. just because they're lovely I feel like I should wear them all the time now yeah I take them to bow ties now Whenever, whenever recording, we'll we'll make sure we're wearing a bow tie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, Helen, because you've uh, you've started this business and you, you sell bow ties, do people uh, come to you for fashion advice now? I think um, often people ask me, you know, whether to wear these the matching bow tie and pocket square. And that's a bit of a sort of controversial issue because I know some people think you should absolutely not wear the same yeah. bow tie and pocket square. Yeah. And then other people who are perhaps more traditional and think, you know, that's fine and that's what they want. So I do, I sort of sell quite a lot of sets of matching bow ties and pocket squares. Oh, awesome. Equally, people, you know, come and want completely the opposite and different. So I have people, you know, wanting sort of different shapes of bow tie. Oh. And although I don't have many different shapes on my website, I do, I think all the black silk ones come in the different shapes. So I think one of the, uh, one of the bow ties that I do, I call like the narrow bat and it's basically rectangular. Oh. And that people, you know, people really like that one because it's, I think it's more, slightly more modern looking. Oh, okay. Yeah. You don't want the great big one like the clown used to wear, you know, with the skinny one. <laughs> Haven't made one of those ones yet. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did get asked by a guy to make a, a TIE fighter, Star Wars one. Ooh. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. So you do commissions as well. Did he um, give you that fabric or did he just say, oh, look, I just want a Star Wars theme. Can you find some fabric for me? He wasn't even that specific, actually. He said, oh, I'm, an, I'm like an engineer or something. And I, he might have said, I like Star Wars. I can't. But anyway, I went and found the fabric and I gave him a few options. I think there was one with Darth Vader on. But he said, well, because I'm the engineer, I really like the TIE Fighter one because it kind of looked like um, it sort of had a grid effect. and A schematic, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have, yeah, quite often actually people get in touch with me asking for specific things and I do a bit of hunting around and find some fabric and yeah, I really enjoy doing that. Yeah. The next thing you'll be doing Star Trek ones and yeah, I've, you'll be the sci-fi queen. Yeah. <laughs> I actually keep meaning to, I've got some of the TIE fighter fabric left over actually. And I keep meaning to make a bow tie and get that on the website. See if anybody else likes it. Yeah. There's a few crazy Star Wars men. <laughs> Now you've got a variety of different uh, bow ties uh, in different fabrics, uh, silk. I think there's some velvet ones as well. What's your favourite fabric to work with? I, I must admit, I like just plain old cotton. I only use natural fibres, so that's one of the things about my business. It's there's no polyester, oh. there's no man-made fibres. I'm not saying that they're not, you know, good. They don't make decent bow ties, but my sort of ethos was I want to be using pure cotton, pure silks. Even the velvet is a pure cotton velvet. Oh wow! And I, it's so the silk makes beautiful beautiful bow ties but it's definitely harder to work with mm, very slippery isn't it it is and it's delicate and mm. kind of it, it shreds up around the edges so you need to be really careful to sort of line it properly whereas the cotton it sort of sews really easily and it's it's yeah much more convenient to work with i think yeah and i think if you're okay with wearing a uh, polyester bow tie you can there are a dime a dozen you could just buy them from china basically on on ebay yeah exactly i mean you can like 4.99 is expensive you know for a polyester bow tie on ebay and if that's what you want then absolutely great you know go for it but that's not what i do yeah yeah but you uh you won't be able to get one with uh with the strawberry thief uh the pattern that's for sure yeah i don't think so i don't think liberty make that in a polyester no <laughs> <laughs> now we have a question from a previous guest on our podcast chris martin he wanted to know the ties have the piano ties you know the classic piano tie it has the keys going down people uh -huh. usually wear that when i want to be a little bit wacky is there a bow tie equivalent oh i just sold my last one today <laughs> how weird is that oh really yeah so I have... oh you have one with piano keys do on it do you i do yes i think i've still got a pre-tied version on the website i think i've got one of those available but the self-tie one i've sold about three in the last week of piano keys wow yeah how weird is that i'll tell chris <laughs> martin and let him know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i will def if i find any more piano key fabric i'm definitely going to get some more because it has been popular oh awesome yeah and i, I think people actually like like that and I think it looks good because the black and the white in the yeah. the bow tie on a tie it just looks a bit much <laughs> <laughs> I think it's nice because you know it, it, like people who are musical or in orchestras mm. bands things like that I think um, yeah. it's just a really nice nod to what they do I think that's a great one yeah and I think it works for people who want to be a little bit wacky and mm. uh, music nerds can show off their originality it, it's like you say uh, it's the best way to show off when you're wearing just a normal suit you can but then you can add a pop of color with the bow tie yeah yeah and you don't have to the trouble with a tie, and not that I've got anything against ties, but it's a lot of colour or a lot of wacky. Whereas a bow tie is is more of a subtle.
small nod to who you are, which is what I like. And great for doctors and physicians because it doesn't get in the way of the operations. Yes. <laughs> and they all wear them. Yeah. I, I work in uh, finance and I have this tie that I like to wear to work. It's a, it's a joker tie. It's purple and silver. And basically it's just the words, ha, 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 written over and over again in those two colours. And so when you look at it from afar, it just looks like a patent tie. But then when they when they come up, I go, oh, yeah, it's actually the, uh, the joker. And they go, oh, yeah, cool. That's cool. Is it a bow tie or a normal tie? No, it's a normal tie. Oh, well, we're not talking about normal ties. They're boring now, Adam. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But that sounds good. I'm trying to pretend I'm cool, guys. <laughs> I like the sound of that fabric, though. I like things like that. That oh, sounds really good. Yeah. Now, do you have any tips for anyone who is thinking about trying to sew their own bow ties? I would recommend using a decent fabric because if you use anything that frays too easily, you might find that uh, you get sort of holes around the seams because obviously you're tying it quite tight and you're pulling it and, you know, opening and closing it. And so the seams need to be quite robust. So if you use a sort of like a weak, poor quality fabric, then it's not going to last very long at all. And I would probably say get yourself a pattern from somewhere because it's going to be quite a challenge to come up with the right size and shape just by eye. So definitely, you know, use a pattern to cut the shape out with. I've got some advice. Don't make your own. Just go to Blue Eyes Bow Ties and buy one. People. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And is there any particular reason why you uh, you stuck with bow ties or do you want to branch out into uh, waistcoats and that sort of thing in the future? I'm, yeah, I'm not sure, really. I think the reason that bow ties stuck was because, you know, they are relatively small. They're easy to post. You know, they don't get damaged in the post. I do make pocket squares and cufflinks as well mm. because they make nice sets and they're also, you know, small and light. And the one thing about it is that when you get into sort of, you know, clothes, clothes, uh, waistcoats, shirts, trousers, you're having to do uh, like sizes for people. Yeah. And and then you, you know, you can't make things in, in advance. You can't have things in stock and it's all to order. And I think, you know, that would become, as it's just me, quite intense. So the nice thing about the bow ties is that, you know, both the pre-tied and the self-ties are adjustable. And I have had the odd person get in touch with me and say, look, I want a fitted bow tie with no, none of like the hardware, none of the clips or the adjusters. And I, and I can make them. Yeah. But I sort of wouldn't routinely have them on my website because I'd have to have one in every single size and you know I, I guess it'd perhaps be a lot of wasted stock yeah and you don't want to do that when you're a small business well you're a small business for now Helen I don't know I think you're going to be a huge business <laughs> yeah hopefully soon you'll have to start hiring your uh, your husband to start working for you yeah as a model yeah <laughs> Yeah, I do. But a few people have said to me, uh, you know, would you have anyone to help? And it's just finding people you can trust. You know, I don't know anyone sort of who does this kind of thing. I have a very good friend who lives up sort of in the north of England, and she'd probably be the only person I trust. And, you know, I've been thinking maybe I could post things to her and she could post them back. But <laughs> yeah, you'd want to know that they were going to give good quality because, you know, I can barely hem anything. So yeah. And you know what? It, it, it's my it's my hobby and I love doing it. And, I, and I, almost like I don't want to give it away because then, you know, that's my hobby gone. So it has to get, I guess, it has to be manageable. Yes. Not that I ever not that I ever want to sort of turn down business, but, you know, I, I can definitely deal with being busier than I am at the moment. And, you know, I'm still a teacher. I can still fit that in. So maybe one day it will all be bow ties. Who knows? You'll find that Doctor Who fans, we're, uh, yeah. we're pretty patient. So we can we can wait for a, for a good quality bow tie. Yeah, I had to put on my website, you know, anyone who makes an order sort of after this date will be dispatched by this date because there was no way that I could stick to my three days when it all kicked off. Yeah. I think I'm back on. Oh, and that's understandable. Yeah, I'm back on sort of track with it now, hopefully for a while, but I might have to sort of put that extra dispatch time on again if it gets busy. Now, now you you, you say you uh, you started this as a hobby and you've, you've turned it into a, a job and hopefully soon you'll be able to make it your full-time profession. Do you have any uh, suggestions for anyone, you know, like ourselves who are trying to turn their passion into a job? I think... You have belief in yourself. I think I spend a lot of time doubting myself and I'm very lucky because my husband completely believes in me and my abilities. So he kind of boosts me and keeps me going. That's amazing. You've got to be passionate, which obviously you are. You've got to really enjoy, you know, what you do and take opportunities that come to you, like sniff out little opportunities. Like for example, and again, so much of this is down to my husband. He's amazing. He helps me so much. But he found on Twitter, there's a competition called 
Small Business Sunday, and it's run by Theo Pafitis. I don't know if you know him. No. no. He is um, a British entrepreneur who was on who's on the British Dragons Den. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yes. Yep. Yeah. So um, he runs this competition on Twitter, and Alex, my husband, he told me to enter it, and I thought, well, I'm not going to win. I've only been going for you know a few months at that point. Anyway, I entered and I won. <gasps> wow. And basically, what this got me was sort of you know thousands of sort of retweets on Twitter and it I got me sort of a few hundred followers and I ended up you know going to a, a conference and meeting the Apophetus and meeting other people like in that world and wow. kind of got, gets you connections and then I won an award through Jacqueline Gold who you know, she's this sort of owner of Anne Summers and it's just like taking those little opportunities and not thinking oh I won't win that or I'm not suitable for that just just have a go and I think that's probably the best advice I could give. Oh awesome. I, I really like that because you know I always say you should ask because people will only say no yeah they won't say no i hate your guts don't ever talk to me <laughs> yeah. again i'll just say no yeah exactly <laughs> i suppose that's, a, that's that's the scariest thing and and you've also uh one of your bow ties was uh was shown in uh british gq Ooh. did you know that was going to happen or, or did you just happen to someone told you it was in the magazine oh no they got in touch with me and they oh, cool. said you know do you want to sort of work with us on this and i i said yeah that again that was another opportunity that just came my way so the gq thing and then there's a woman kirsty also she is oh yeah I know her yeah she's a TV person she does like handmade stuff she had a handmade fair which was a big craft fair in a big stately home um, in England oh, wow. and that was just completely by chance that I ended up going along to that and you know made some connections there so yeah I do think there's a big you know thing for it's not what you know it's who you know so yeah. always talking to people yeah. and making connections it always is but I, I to sum it up take your chances and find yourself an Alex yeah yeah Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I was going to say, do you uh, rent your husband out to give support to other businesses now? or? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could we borrow him? No, I'm, I'm afraid I'll give you advice, but you're not having him. Damn. Damn. <laughs> One last question. What movie do you think would be improved by adding the Doctor? Well, I gave this a bit of thought and I thought if we're going to mess with films, let's mess with the classics. Yeah. So I would oh, like yeah. to see Doctor Who in the 1940 Alfred Hitchcock adaptation of Rebecca Ooh. because I thought maybe Ooh. he could save Mandela. Oh, that would be oh. good. Who knows what might happen? And it's black and white, so it could look really cool. The Doctor's probably met Alfred Hitchcock probably yeah yeah absolutely I was thinking there's something going on here like with the housekeeper he could do something to save the situation I think he could be in that that's actually that was one of my favorite books and I love the film so yeah, yeah. put him in there yeah. <laughs> all right the doctor is in Rebecca Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca fantastic <laughs> thank you so much for joining us Helen thank you oh it's been a real pleasure thank you for talking to me it's been lovely to talk to you oh no thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure I'm sure you'll you'll have uh, a lot of uh, a uh, lot of orders after the first episode comes out on January the 1st. And if you want a bow tie, jump in straight away and order one, no matter how long it takes to get to you, because they are running out. Yes. So you've got your website, blueeyebowties.com. You're also on Facebook and Twitter. Is there anything else that you'd like to plug? I'm on Instagram as well. And I would just love, you know, people to tag me. If you buy the bow tie and you take pictures, please tag me. I would love to see it on people being used. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you, Helen. And it, you know, congratulations and I can just you're going to go from strength to strength with this so one day we're going to say Haha, we've talked to Helen <laughs> oh, that's lovely thank you very much all right thank you Helen thank you take care bye bye <laughs> thank you bye 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 this has been a production of the, the nerd, nerd infinite. infinite and then the sound of dragons spitting fire and stuff what why are you looking at me like that